Well, first off, creatine is a, uh, a natural product we actually produce in our body, and uh, we produce it from about three amino acids. Now, amino acids are found in all food products, uh, dairy products, uh, some vegetables as well, well as lean meats and, uh, and seafood especially, but we combine three of these amino acids to form creatine, and most people are, are familiar with creatine being in food products or uh, supplement stores or a dietary supplement. But creatine is naturally found in abundance in red meat and seafood, um, but due to scares with uh, cholesterol or the cost of choosing food, uh, some individuals do select creatine supplements. There's probably been over a thousand studies on creatine supplementation uh, with or without exercise. And what we're seeing is that creatine has a beneficial effect at increasing potential energy. So if you give an individual more potential energy when they're exercising, they may be able to exercise longer and at a higher intensity. And we saw that quite apparent in younger individuals. So the thought is with the aging body, usually after the age of around 50 is where we start to see a decrease in muscle and bone health. We thought if we can give creatine to these individuals while they're weight training, they may get a greater increase in strength, muscle mass, and bone health, and hopefully that will lead to an increase in functionality. So we've done about probably 10 or 15 studies now looking specifically at creatine and aging, and what we're finding is that it definitely does increase muscular strength, so the ability to contract a muscle group uh, at a powerful range. Uh, we definitely see an increase in muscle mass, so for functionality later on in life, it does seem to help. But the new emerging therapy or strategy is that is actually increasing bone health. It seems like the cells in our bone use creatine as potential energy, and we think that it can actually make our bones uh, more rigid. So specifically for individuals with osteoporosis uh, or a precursor for osteoporosis, osteopenia, uh, creatine could be a non-pharmacological uh, therapy, so to speak, to uh, maintain our bone health. Uh, so what we're looking at now in our lab is a, a clinical study to look at creatine combined with weight training, just three days a week, with a little bit of, of creatine is about a teaspoon, and you combine this or consume it in close proximity to exercise, so a little bit before and a little bit after. And um, what we're actually seeing in previous studies is that it has shown to have a trend or potential uh, acute beneficial effects, and we want to look at the long, longer term uh, effects over time. So the theory is that if you give creatine, which is aiding in energy production, these individuals, no matter how old they are, they may feel better as they're exercising, and that could stimulate or encourage them to exercise longer, and hopefully that will increase uh, uh, muscle and bone health or decrease sarcopenia, which is the age-related loss of muscle, and of course osteoporosis, which is the age-related loss in bone tissue. New therapy or new emerging evidence is also looking at strategies, how much to take, when to take it. But the other caveat is we've always looked at side effects. There's some anecdotal reports that athletes who take creatine may have some GI tract irritation, muscle cramping, dehydration, and we monitor that very closely in the older adults. And to date, uh, there hasn't been any side effects if it's done in a laboratory or an experimental uh, control trial.